Okay, Reggie, um, before we get started on this week's questions, uh, is there anything you wanted to speak on or talk about before we get into it? Uh, right quick, right quick, I just want to shout out the Pisces. It's the Pisces season, right? Yeah, birthday uh, time of the month. I don't know too many Pisces, but one person I talk to every day is a Pisces. So we'll talk about that later in the next couple of episodes. But, uh, but yeah, shout out to all the Pisces. And then uh, also, uh, uh, man, John, we've been neglecting on putting up the, and it's got, starting to get hot again. So we better try to get these, show, these shirts sold so we, because uh, we got a whole bunch of them. You know, when we showed that episode of the P-Funk t- uh, sweat tops, everybody said they want one, they want one. We made a bunch of them, and now y'all ain't buying them. So we got about 50 we have left, about 50 we have left that we need to get rid of. So we're going to mark them down to $40. <laughs> y'all yeah, say mark them down. We're going to sell them for $40 so we can get rid of them and before it get hot because it's not going to be cool to wear them in the summertime. We'll buy those uh, P-Funk t- uh, sweat tops. They're real nice. Hopefully, John put it up so y'all can see them. And y'all can order them on our YouTube uh, at the bottom of the YouTube page. They're usually in the description. Or for those of y'all on Facebook, you can also get them there. Uh, Death Row East t-shirts, always available. And Bomb First t-shirts as well. So y'all can pick those up. Start supporting us with that. Helping us out. A lot of people always asking, what can we do for y'all? How we can help y'all? Well, y'all can help us out by buying no t-shirts. Um, let's see that. And then, uh, man, I want to give a shout out, man, about an hour ago before I started taping, a dude that was like, his brother was really like a brother to me. And in the last about five years, me and him have been real, real close. Uh, he suddenly, he had a procedure on Monday, and uh, things didn't go well for him. He he passed away a couple hours a day. My boy Boo, uh, oh, man, shout out to you, Boo, man. Rest in peace. And uh, this one hurts. So if I seem a little down or off on the next set of tapings of tapings of episodes, it's just because uh, Boo is real heavy on my heart right now. So shout out to him and. Uh, Prayers to the Mitchell's family. Yeah. Um, other than that, John, that's about it. Hey. Sorry. Um, <laughs> one of the big topics uh, coming <laughs> out of this week was a producer that worked with Diddy named Little Rod did a lawsuit. And in that lawsuit, he alleged um, a lot of things, one of which is that um, he was slipped one of the famous drinks that Diddy does, and then he woke up um, feeling like something had happened to him during the night. I can't say the word on YouTube, but people know what I'm talking about. And he also alleged that Meek Mill and Diddy had a relationship, a sexual relationship. I wanted to see if you had read any of this, or if you had any reaction to people actually coming out now and saying that Diddy does stuff with men that's not just the Cassies and the um, escorts and whatnot. Well, yeah. You know, I love I love y'all when y'all act like this on YouTube, like y'all haven't been hearing Reggie Wright speak on this stuff. <laughs> I've been, I told y'all, I said, real soon, well, it's going to start coming out about men because Puffy is not paying for male escorts, ordering up male escorts, if he's not doing it for his enjoyment, you only order up female escorts and other females. If you get down like that, you don't be ordering up no male unless you want that male with you. So for all the others acting shocked and surprised, I said somebody's gonna come out and expose him real soon. And of course, that's what's happening. It's unfortunate that uh, stuff like that happened to people. I know y'all believe in that Illuminati stuff. I don't believe in an Illuminati. I'm going to tell y'all up front. And y'all say now because the powers in the bee is not protecting Puffy is the reason that uh, these people are, are, are coming out and suing them. Well, that ain't why. Because now 
once you pay out people, and that's why when he paid out that that judgment the next day, I told him that was bad. Because when attorneys will take on cases and say, hey, this dude paying out this quick, he'll pay us a million dollars right quick or $300,000, whatever, if he wants stuff to go away. And, you know, I'm sure the insurance companies that he has that mainly y'all don't know is the one that be paying those things out. I try to educate y'all on is usually your company insurance companies that, that pay them out and make the decisions when you have the business insurance or the businesses you have the different type of insurance that make you pay out the things because by the time you have all of the different lawyers and stuff involved it's just as quick to sell a case so that's a, unfortunately is what's happening to puffy everybody's going to come out of the world works so anyway, i'm not trying to say that he don't deserve any of these these are lawsuits. I don't believe about Meek Mills. I'm a Meek Mill fan. I don't know what happened. I noticed when he talked about it, though. <sighs> Meek Mills didn't deny it. <laughs> like I said, I don't want to believe that uh, that is true. But I am one of those like y'all. When motherfucker don't say, nigga, you motherfucking crazy. I ain't never did no shit like that. <laughs> Then it's usually some smoke uh, with that fire. And so I'm not up here saying Meek Mills was involved in that thing. I'm not saying Usher. <laughs> yeah, I am. Uh, or, or Justin Bieber and all of them. Puffy's going to turn out to be our modern day. Uh oh, y'all about to get mad. He's going to be Mike, you know, my, our modern-day Michael Jackson is what Puffy turned out to be, in my opinion. That's my opinion, my opinion only. Oh, I know black folks get mad when we say Michael was doing that stuff, but I believe Michael like uh, doing things with little boys as well. That was my opinion. Uh, ask me how I know. I know a alleged victim that was around us. He's a very, very good friend with Ray J today. But anyway, um, oh man, it's hard for me to say whether this stuff is true or not. And I'm not going to get up there and start debating it. But y'all heard it. I've been telling y'all all, Puffy been giving y'all all the signs that he's trying to come out of the closet. Hope he just finally just come out of the closet. It's obvious in 2024, we don't care. Society don't care no more. They done TV shows and all of that, them brainwashers that said half of y'all, well, maybe 10% of y'all in the comment section, take dick and ass. And, hey, that's just the era we live in. I have a problem with gay. Y'all say, well, why you care what a man doing and all that? Because that's one of the main reasons that God flooded the world and, and set the world on fire and did all the stuff that he did because he was mad when he found out that men were down here having sex with animals and having sex with other men and stuff like that. That was the one thing that pissed off God. Y'all read your Bible, y'all learn. I know there's more, more to it than what I just explained, but that was the, the gist of what happened. So that's why I have a problem with homosexuality. But I know in 2024, I'm from an old school where in the 80s and the 90s, people that were doing that were hiding it. But and now y'all out with it. So, hey, that's on y'all. But my point is, to saying that is, Puff needed just to come on out with it. Because those lawsuits and stuff is going to keep, people going to keep blackmailing him and threatening him and they're trying to expose him with these things because they think that he's scared of these things coming out. And once you don't give a fuck and tell them, I don't care. Do what y'all got to do. These were adults. These weren't kids. Everybody that did something like that wanted it. It ain't too much that's going to be happening. The next thing that's going to be happening... And um, after this, is now you're going to start seeing some criminal investigations getting opened. 
And um, because when you get too much of the smoke, uh, law enforcement generally gets involved. So that would be the next thing that will be happening to, to Puffy, unfortunately, for his sake. Y'all know, I'm one that believes if you ain't getting psychological help, getting some type of help, and you're a victim, you got to come right away with me and tell it. Then you're a victim to me. But when you're talking about it and you haven't been getting some type of psychological help, then you 10, 15 years later want to come talk about it? Y'all better not ever have me on no jury for no shit like that. Because I'm going to be like, get the fuck out of here. Why didn't you bring it up when you happened? That's what's supposed to happen to rape victims and victims to me. If the stuff come out immediately. Not years later. Not when you finally find an attorney to take the case. Because they find this open season. And they seeing that you opening up the checkbook and stuff like that. And so, that's what's happening to y'all boy Puff, P. Diddy, brother love and all of that. But don't act like y'all just starting to hear it. Because I've been telling y'all, the brother is a homosexual. And he's fighting it, trying to hide it. And he needed to just come clean. Yeah. He'll be good. Y'all remember when I told y'all that deal on that last video? All of y'all need to apologize in the comment section too. When I told y'all that his deal wasn't, he still owned, had that deal with Ciroc. And when I talked about it, everybody was like, oh, they already did away with him. And I told y'all, ain't true. Ain't, it ain't, you can't just take stuff from him. Well, then y'all just see the article a couple of months later where they settled with him and they made a deal with him. I'll be trying to tell y'all stuff, but I love for how y'all go listen to other motherfuckers on YouTube and all you YouTube attorneys. But when y'all want to hear stuff, know stuff, get it right, y'all know what to call. Bomb first. You get it first. That's why we bomb on niggas first. <laughs> like Tupac say. Peace, bomb first. Okay, <clears throat> there is a girl um, online that people may have seen. You may have seen her, Reggie. Um, very conspiracy type. Her name is Jaguar Wright. And she always has these kind of crazy stories. Anyhow, uh, she did a segment on YouTube with some, you know, she was a guest on somebody's channel that I saw. And uh, she's talked directly about you and said that... Um, you need to quit threatening people online and that uh, Keefe D was beat within an inch of his life and that he's already out on bail and a bunch of other stuff. Anyway, um, did you see the video I'm referring to? Do you have any thoughts on the person or what they said specifically about you? Damn, her last name is Wright. I wish she'd get mine right because she said Reggie White. For those of y'all who know, Reggie White is a, is a football fan player that died, but he was very, very uh, religious, and he was very, very good uh, in football. That's who Reggie White is. I'm Reggie motherfucking Wright. Wright, W-R-I-G-H-T. So I wish people who don't know me that just want to try to uh, get clickbait will learn my name at least, if you're going to use me for clickbait. But... All we have in common, for those of y'all, I'm not related to the bitch. I know y'all think I gossip and talk shit about people like she does, in which she might reel me in because I, I didn't know much about her, didn't know much about her at all, to be honest. But, of course, when you mention my name, I go and start researching on you. And I was like, damn, people actually listen to this fat male-looking female? This is a, a drag queen. Well, she said she wasn't married and beat up some dude, went to jail for domestic violence and all of that. So I guess she is a female. 
or claims to be a female in a relationship, but she looked, I thought she was a motherfucking drag queen, to be honest. So some people said she did some stuff in the music business. I learned one thing from her when, when researching her and said, who the hell is this person that want to speak on me? And uh, she said that a friend, a, a young lady that I have a lot of respect for that I knew, uh, Capricorn, was, was the half-sister, I guess, of uh, Laura London. Don't know if, I don't want to believe anything she said to be true. I pulled it up on the internet and some things popped up about it. I never heard that. I, I knew Capricorn very well. Like I said, she's a, she was Puffy ex assistant that Shug talked about on his podcast. Uh, that was one of uh, Puffy's victims as well. But, but Cap was good people. Her and Stormy were good friends. Uh, Shug, one of Shug's baby mothers, little Shug's mother. Uh, they were they were real tight at one time. I don't know their relationship currently, and uh, so that makes sense with the sixty Crips thing. When you start hearing stuff and putting stuff together, I'd be like, damn, okay, that's where that come from. That's why Laura London was so crazy about a sixty Crip dude. Because if y'all don't know, she's the one that reached out to uh, to Nip and uh, pursued that relationship, and you know, and so that would that would make some sense to why Lauren did that because, you know, she knew about that through Stormy and, and Cal. So that's the only thing I learned from her that might be possibly true on listening to her. Everything else is just her reading, sitting on the internet, reading and putting her spin on it. So why people listen to her, I don't know. Even on the talking about me and, and the speculation and she said she was good friends with Michelle and I never seen her or knew her, of her being around Michelle. I haven't dealt with Michelle since about 2004. So she talking about after 2004, I don't know. Uh, but this on the situation that she tried to accuse me of with having Keefe D beat up in prison and all of that in county jail, well, I was opinionated. I, I never even said or known to it to be factual. They said this is what, well, I did hear that he got whooped on, but people were saying stabbed and all of that. But like I had something to do with it. I wish I had as much power as people give me to have. I wish I do. Because a lot of you niggas would be, well, anyway. But she also said Keefy D's out on bail like it was factual and on house arrest. Y'all seen him. Any of y'all watched the court appearance? He had a court hearing on the 20th, 21st of February. That nigga was still in handcuffs for what I saw. And that interview that she did had been out at least a week when, when we saw him walking in the courtroom still in shackles. So Jaguar Wright is a, uh, is a, a troll in, in, you know, reading, searching, and people give interviews to her for whatever reason. Don't know what she did to give her her claim of fame, but I can't see anything, anything that she has said that came to the truth about anybody. And somebody that just speaking out of the side of her neck is what I get from from her. And um, yeah, it's funny to me how y'all let people that's obviously broke you look at everything and look how she looked. Just. And, uh, there's people that are just sitting up here just making up shit. Everything. Y'all say I do that. But I always ask y'all, call me on a lie. Post a lie. Tell me a lie that I said. Something might be opinionated. I may have made some dates wrong or said something wrong or something like that. But tell me some lies that I call or said. Call me on them. Y'all go over there and listen to other motherfuckers that just live off of me. We got a motherfucker broke. Everybody, and it's funny how everybody that talks about me, I look at the backgrounds in their house and stuff like that, and I'll be like, this is a broke motherfucker that's talking this bullshit. That snitch joke, gap tooth. Uh, uh, the nigga walking around his mama house. Uh, that fool that was always just trying to sell stuff that... That gully, uh, all 
all of these people, Nina, Nina boy, I just threatened him about exposing him on this rape case, and that nigga done ran off of, off of YouTube. JMX was a, a, a fucking meth head. Uh, RJ Bond, that nigga living off his kids, his retarded kids, I ain't just test checks. <laughs> Man, it's just funny to me, all of these people that that love to troll Reggie and y'all just let them go and control Reggie. And Reggie just tell the stories. If you like it, you listen to it. If you don't like it, don't click. <laughs> don't, you ain't got to listen to it. I respond to things that, that's been told or said. I'm not up here patting myself on the back saying, I did this, I did that, I did this. I don't do that. But hey, y'all keep going over there supporting people like that that just like to set up and make stuff up for a click. You know, if y'all want to listen to people that's doing positive stuff, like DJ Academics or, you know, Vlad and Art or Cam and all of that, that's cool. Even that boy Adam22, he does good things. He's about to get indicted. Or are you going to get shot? One of the two. <laughs> Real soon. Because that shit, he's over there playing with those no gang members. It's dangerous. Dangerous. But, hey. Reggie's opinion. That's all I got to say about her. Miss Jaguar Wright, you don't know me. Don't know anything about you. What you gonna say, F me? Go suck on your she male boyfriend. That's who you need to be worried about. Peace. Um, so, in our last set of tapings, Reggie, you had mentioned that Keefe D had a hearing coming up. Um, I believe it was on the 20th of last month, or maybe it was this 20th of this month. can't remember. I think it was 20, 20th of this month. Um, did you catch the hearing? And if so, did you learn anything new or catch anything that his, uh, KVD or his lawyer may have spoken on? Yeah, it was just one thing that I found that was real strange in that. As a matter of fact, I just want to say I just watched that Wendy Williams on show. Man, shout out to... Uh, the people that put out that Wendy Williams show, and man, I feel sorry for Wendy Williams. Wendy Williams, boy, man, she been through a lot, and um, that nigga was, was laying a pipe to her ass, cause she in love, <laughs> she's still in love. Man, I ain't never seen a female go crazy behind some dick. <laughs> I ain't never seen that. And that's what Wendy Williams, dad and drugs and alcohol, but mainly that nigga, that boy, Kevin, boy, he put a two Wendy and made her go crazy, lose her career. But anyway, Keefe motherfucking D. It's interesting to see. Only thing I got from it is, hey, I told y'all it's going to be a bunch of hearings. I know, for those of y'all don't know, his date got moved back to like November the 4th of uh, this year. It's going to get moved back from there. So don't even, for those of y'all want to go to Vegas and watch the Watch, watch the hearings and all of that, which I, I still want to believe he's going to plead out. So I think, um, but don't buy your tickets for November the 4th. <laughs> and um, because trust me, trust me, trust me, it'll be until sometime in 2025 when it's all said and done. Uh, that's just how the court system works. Um, but he has another hearing coming up. I think, uh, I think it was on Shug's birthday. Or right around there, April the 21st. She was birthday the, the 19th of April, but uh, the 21st, I think, is, is when his next court hearing is. And they're going to be doing a lot of hearings like that, you know, uh, just to clear up things, you know, seeing where they are with discoveries and, and emotions and all of that. But Keefe, I think he got caught up in a situation where people were always saying, I would do this. I would give you this money, but I, you know, the the the, the people are looking, and, and I ain't gonna come to court. And 
or, you know, I don't want everybody in my business, so I can't give you the money. And so Keefe was all right, okay, well, let me ask to see if I can get this shit done secretly or in private. And so, hey, if there is somebody privately that's trying to give him some money, who 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 would it be? Who y'all think would do that? Yeah, I know Puffy ain't going to come nowhere near close to him, so y'all get that out of y'all here. Ah, Shug Knight, you know, Shug Knight, he don't care nothing about no Keefe D. And plus, shit. He ain't got the money to do that, no way. Uh, so I don't know who, who it could be. Could it be Pat? Possibly. If y'all hear anything going through Chris Stokes and some Tubi TV deals, I'll give y'all more on that. <laughs> but I don't know. He wants somebody to secretly, secretly slide him some money. So he say, I know how I done been on the other ends of the phone calls too. I'd be like, well, I can't do it, but if you get this done, I can do it this way or do it that way. And I think that's what's happening to him. And so uh, KVD is still in custody. They have a, what they call a source hearing that the people gonna have to show where the money came from. It's, it's, it's why people, it's why he wanted that to be done privately because nobody want to be associated or, or like they looking out for Keefe D's, uh, for Keefe D, you know, for the murder of a, of a, of Tupac. So, um, he gonna have a hard time getting that bail money. Um, or less than, like I said, he sell his rights. And so, um, yeah, that's, that's what, um, I don't think will have to happen. And, um. That's what I got from that hearing. But the most important thing is we're just doing an update. Uh, that It's going to be some more hearings. It's going to be one in April. I think they did it 60 days away from that date. And about every 60 days, the judge going to have a hearing. Now, if y'all hear something or see something that those of y'all that's following it and looking it up, uh, something like that, another hearing come up real soon, then that means that, uh, that they did find somebody that's willing to... Uh, to front up the $75,000 for him. And like I told y'all on the episode before, hey, that's what America's about. That's why we live in a country like this. So I don't have no problem with him uh, exercising his rights to bail out. Uh, like I said, it's just now in the hands of justice and let the, uh, the courts and the justice system uh, do what it has to do. And so that's what I would suggest that uh, people set up and let play out in here and all of that, not be calling up there, uh, objecting and all of that stuff. Because some of you motherfuckers, boy, y'all some bitch ass niggas, boy, when they come to uh, trying to keep somebody in jail. Because trust me, I experienced it. I had motherfuckers calling my U.S. attorney office and everything when I was out fighting my case, trying to get me Violated for saying, use a bitch or use of that. <laughs> Man, motherfucker, people on YouTube, on the YouTube channels are some, some keyboard gangsters, some phone calling gangster people. And so he do have to watch out for that. And uh, so that's, that's all I got. That's all we can talk about on Keefe. And, uh, yeah, do a GoFund page for him. For those of y'all that care, talking that free Keefe, he might uh, use that money at least to pay for his attorney. Weirdos. <laughs> yep. So, Reggie, on one of our previous segments, you had mentioned that um, you sent a let your lawyer sent a letter, and. Um, you were looking for your publishing money. I wanted to do a follow-up and ask you some of the questions that came up in the comments. And those were, um, so it's gonna be a two-part um, thing. So could you go into more detail about publish uh, the publishing that you're owed? But the stuff from the comments were, if Snoop doesn't own Death Row, why are you telling him to pay you? And um, number two, on the letter, it was mentioning just the Tupac stuff that you have ownership in. 
uh, people were asking about the DAS stuff, if you could go into that as much as, you, as you're comfortable with. Well, yeah. Well, the reason why I say Snoop is because he's supposedly in charge. I never said he didn't have control or a lot of juice. I think that's the term that I use over there with Death Row. He is the front man, and he has some executive power uh, of, 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 um, of the company. You know, you have general managers, and, you know, I'll put in some layman terms for y'all. The people that actually own the Lakers or, or own, or own um, the Chicago Bears or whatever, they are not the ones that's making the decisions about the day-to-day -day operations about who getting paid and who get cuts. It's the general managers, the, the CFOs, the, C, the COOs and all of that. No, that's a little bit too deep for a lot of y'all. But the person that's in charge of the company is the one that usually can make things happen and they go and suggest to the owner that, hey, this has to be done or this is why I did this or whatever. You usually have a uh, threshold that you can be in charge of um, or amount that you can pay out without, you know, it coming across the, uh, the owner's desk. Now, you better be able to answer it if they do an audit on your ass <laughs> later on. But, uh, you know, you can justify stuff like that. That's why I always talk to him directly as far as uh, he can make it happen. He can tell the person that's over that royalty department or whatever to check it into it, investigate it. What the hell is he talking about? Stuff like that. But you know what? I didn't want to show this, and I'm going to go ahead and show this and have John ex expose it and bring it up. I know it's going to be a lot of work for John, but... He asked the question, so he have to do it. Y'all look on the back of the album. Of all the work that Daz did on Doggy Style, Murder Was the Case, uh, um, dog, food, dog, dog, dog Food, Dog Father, and All Eyes on Me. They had a company on the back of it called Amani. Amani Publishing. Y'all see that? Slash Ignite uh, Publishing. Y'all see that? Okay. So then we, we went in. I made a deal with this company called D3 Entertainment in like 98. Took it and got the company and uh, got the, the albums and stuff like that. Redigitized and and... And then on you know, some of the later songs, like uh, The Chronic and stuff like that, after me and Daz did the deal, y'all see he changed the name to uh, another uh, publishing company. So, what was it called, John? Dog, Dog, Dog Pound Publishing or uh, something? D. Dillinger. Oh, D. Dillinger. Yeah, music. So, when he changed it to that name, Y'all see it says that, and then it says Simon Says Production, or Simon Says um, Publishing. And y'all see all the, the current and the old stuff is under with Big Simon or Simon Says. So everything on a money publishing was bought out. And that's why he changed it, his, his company's name to the new company of Daz Dillinger. Productions. That's this Das. But there's other people. There's other artists. They all know it. From Swoop G to Little C Style, the Rillas, everybody all know it. Where and then y'all start seeing a name called Big Simon or Simon Says Music Publishing on the back of it. That's when Reggie Wright created a company and did buyouts with all these people or bought their rights on songs that they had that were coming out, that were new. Now, y'all say, well, why you do that to them and all of that? Well, because these motherfuckers was broke. And they needed some money. And so what I did was gave them money so they could live and take care of their families and do stuff and bought their rights. Mainly so we wouldn't have to account to them no more with royalties and all of that was the main reason. Because nobody knew. I didn't know. I wish I did know. 
but nobody knew about fucking digital uh, rights coming down and streamings and, and ringtones on phones and stuff like that. That all came up in what, 2003, 2004 when the stuff started coming out. If you had sold a thousand records, you know, after the first year of an album or two years of an album, you would be lucky until they had this new thing called streaming and, and ringtones and stuff. So this is why they were willing to sell, sell their rights. Me, it was mainly just to clean up the publishing so we didn't have to account to them. And more importantly, I knew about sampling and stuff like that. I knew. I had sat back and watched all these people making money off of Smokey Robinson and the Miracles old songs and stuff like that. People doing remakes on songs and stuff like that. And so that's the only reason that I did the investment. So that's why these people were willing to sell their rights. That's evidence. Y'all see them. Y'all see it. If John posted these things up right, y'all see the different names and how the changeovers and all of that occur. So... For y'all to always say I'm lying and I ain't never wrote nothing. I know I ain't never sat in the studio and wrote shit. But why y'all don't say that about EMI? Sony Music Publishing. All the white company publishing companies and all of that. But then when a black man buying up publishing and stuff like that and doing the thing, y'all want to say, well, you ain't never wrote nothing, why you? Man. Because I'm smart enough to buy. I didn't force nobody to sell any rights, any of their publishers or anything. They needed money. Gave them an opportunity. One or two gave them money to take care of their bills right then. On something that was an investment. Didn't know if it was going to... Some of the people I wanted on. Some of these motherfuckers ain't made shit up. They ain't sold a record since. That was done. So, hey, that's why I say pay me. Why y'all say, well, why are you just starting talking like this in 2024? Because Death Row stuff just started getting reworked and resold in 2024. Death Row was in a, a bankruptcy. Didn't want to get my stuff caught off in the bankruptcy stuff. I was in trouble. Had other worries in my life that I had to go deal with. And they know this. Dads know this. And other artists know this. They all know who did buyouts with them. And why. They wasn't complaining then. They weren't complaining when they ran up the Founders National Bank and cashed that motherfucking check. So, anyway, that's the real, that's what happened on that. And that's why I'm just like, hey, but now my attorneys don't tell me to shut up. They're like, Rich, we got it. People responding. Everybody's investigating it. Your tactics worked. So, hopefully y'all be sending me in a... A bit bigger and a better house <laughs> in a year or two, you haters. <laughs> Peace. California court that kind of opened the door for Suge Knight to possibly get out of jail and get his nine-year sentence overturned. Um, I'll post the article from MTV News on the screen as we're talking about this, but I wanted to ask you, how did this happen? Why did he not get out? Um, what was the logic behind it? And, and what was the mood at the label when you guys heard that he might be coming home way earlier than he actually did. 
Yeah. Well, well of course we were all glad. She was really uh, extremely happy. Now looking back on it, that was the um, the reason why, unfortunately, a lot of artists never blew up. Or you always say, well, y'all didn't never do nothing. Man. You know, y'all never put no albums out. And never. Well, if you really look at Death Row track record, Suge never was one for having that many albums released in a year. The only time that he really did that was the, uh, the fourth quarter of 1996. Uh, when he released his four albums, I think it was the Christmas album, uh, Doggy Style, I mean, Dog Father, uh, Death Row Greatest Hits, and Machiavelli uh, that he released in the fourth quarter. If y'all think about that prior to that, he never really released out a lot of albums in, in, you know, in, a, in one time period. Maybe two, two albums to three albums at most a year. But um, I say all that to say, unfortunately, that's what hurt a lot of things to, to slow down because she was like, I'm about to come home. I'm about to come home. And so we'll do that. We'll, you know, Crooked Eye. I remember Crooked Eye had an album that was done that was banging. I don't want to hear that, Rich. I'm coming home and, and, you know, put my touches to it and all of that. Wait till I come home. And so that's why a lot of things got held up because of that. Hearing it was a two-one decision for him to to be uh, for the appeal or for his case to be overturned uh, because they had some language about um, his plea deal and his two strikes and you know whether he, the, the time was suspended and all of that something that David Kenner argued and got a two-one but for some reason it got held up. I don't know if they filed a you know a appeal on top of it, meaning the state uh, to the the California Supreme Court, which that's obviously the only way that uh, you know the appeal court could um, you know some can get overturned if they had to file appeal to the California Supreme Court, which I th as I remember is, is what happened. But I'm telling you how that David Kenner, every week that I walked into that prison. He was tell he he had came and met with Shook that Tuesday of every week, and then I would come up with him and his family members or and his female friends uh, Thursday through Sunday. And that Thursday, the first thing he would say to me, "Red got good news." <laughs> I swear to God, I'm coming old. Dave said to the point where I had to tell him, "Stop telling me what fucking David Kenner said." I think after about two or three months, I was like, fuck what David Kenner said. And so that's what happened. Uh, but he did win uh, an appeal, but it never happened. He did not walk out of prison until, uh, I remember it like yesterday, April the, I'm sorry, August the 3rd, 2000. And, um, 2001, yeah, 2001 of August the 3rd is when he walked out. And he actually walked out of uh, uh, the state prison prior to that, but he had a six months tail that he had to go do about four months on, on um, and for, for the federal violation that he had for, um, that he got violated for that assault as well. So... That's what happened. I think that article hurt us more than helped us because it made him not want to do anything and to want to put everything on a pause or wait, you know, wait till I get home. It was like, wait till daddy get home. You remember that, that TV show? Wait till your father get it. You know, he had everybody and he was treating everybody like that. Um, just, just to flee so. I, I understand why. I just hate that it happened because looking back on it because um, that's what hurt him. Uh, you know, the company, in my opinion, for not doing more. Not the company, the artists. I'm telling you, I always wanted to believe that we shouldn't keep trying to push out 
I guess doing it how Snoop doing it, doing Death Row now. <laughs> Just live off the royalties, off the catalog. <laughs> I was I was big on that. I I used to tell Shook that all the time. Dog, we good. Fuck trying to put out new artists. We making six million to seven million dollars a year, just off on the catalog. Let's shut this shit down. We can both just, you know, in our families and you know, people. Everybody can just live off of this. Said that to him many a times, but he wanted to keep it going and he wanted to keep, you know, employing a bunch of people and 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 work his label, and uh, which I got to, you know. Tip my head off to him for not being selfish, because if it was Reggie Wright shit. <laughs> we would have been still every every year just living off that six seven million dollars <laughs> that was coming in, and thought we would have been good. And I'm saying we, and that's just I just get the percentage of you know what what was coming in, but I I feel and I knew you know at that point that I would have been taken care of because. Everything was in my name. The building, the cars, <laughs> the publishing. So for all y'all saying, why do you say we? Because y'all don't know. Y'all don't know the history. Y'all don't know the real. So we would have been good. But yeah, that's what happened on that, John. Okay. Um, Snoop caught a good amount of flack this week for posting a photo on Instagram with like his his grandkids or something like that, and he's probably like a foot or two away from them, and he's holding weed, like he's smoking weed. Um, did you see that post? We'll post it for people, you know, watching this. But did you see that, and um, did you have any thoughts? Yeah. You know, people that I, I know that smoke weed and, 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 and stuff like that, you know, they they don't have a problem with smoking in front of their family members because it's so routine and so habit to them. It's like, you know, drinking beer and stuff like that in front of, you know, it's wrong. We know all of this stuff is wrong now because of um, talk shows and and, and and the education that we get now from from the Oprah Winfrey shows and, uh, you know, the talk shows and all the therapists and Dr. Phil and all of them now. Where y'all gotta remember, we grew up in the 80s and the 90s where Shit, our mama and daddy, you know, drunk beer, drunk alcohol, everything, when they partying with their friends in front of us. And most of our parents, fortunately mine didn't, but um, were smoking cigarettes and stuff like that. And that stuff like that was just norm, the things that now that, you know, it's considered taboo to do in front of your kids and people. So Snoop knows better. He knows better, but I just believe he just got caught slipping. Uh, because he don't look at weed, he look at weed like a fucking cigarette to him. Now he wouldn't do the other things that uh, that I believe he does. Uh, he wouldn't probably do that in front of his grandkids. But I give him a pass, and I I give him a pass because I know that stuff that just came sick, second nature to him. I'm not saying it's right. I'm not saying it's right at all. But. Unfortunately, when you do stuff like that, and he has been doing it as long as he has, him smoking a marijuana joint is like smoking a fucking cigarette in his mind. And um, I think that's what he got caught up in. But uh, did y'all see the latest stuff that's been coming out lately about, uh, well, uh, I'll I'll say that what he said about Charlie Wilson. Well, he said that Charlie Wilson saved his marriage and taught him about the value of, of marriage and all of that. I guess that's why he was able to forgive his wife for all of these pictures, huh? All of these things she was out there doing. I guess Charlie Wilson is why he. He said, it's all good, baby. I forgive you. Because look at these things. Could you have forgave your wife for doing all these things for a man? 
and taking pictures with a man like this? No. We never heard of them officially filing for no divorce. But that's the thing that I think he might was trying to cover up. That's what I think. He was trying to get tensions off the pictures that's been getting posted lately. That's my opinion. Shout out to marriage, black love, swingers. <laughs> I guess swingers is the new thing, huh? Yeah. It's cheaper to keep her. I guess I would too. I might just deal with her too. But, you know, y'all say, hey, Snoop did his thing. He had two babies. He got two other kids out there outside his marriage. Yeah, but it's something else when your wife do it. I can go and fuck another chick and won't give a fuck about him. And do it. But when a woman lay up with you and they taking pictures and spending time with, with a dude like that, That's love. That's love. Can't forget that. Don't know where niggas learning that shit from. Better stop hanging out with Martha Stewart or now. <laughs> Peace, Bob, first. Okay. You're gonna be mad when all this come out and it's all blank because it's all cuss words, but. <clears throat> Huh. Well, you don't make, make money or whatever. I mean, um, Layla Steinberg did an interview. Um, she was Tupac's first manager. Uh, she was speaking, talking about how Tupac would never join a gang, how he wasn't a gang member, and basically talking about what his plan was with Death Row and his plan to leave and all that. Uh, did you see that little segment thing on, on Instagram? And if so, do you have any thoughts about her? Yeah. Layla Steinberg, I've been tired of her. I'll be letting her get away with it because I know she used to be uh, Tupac's on Sugar Mama back in the day. For those of y'all don't know, Tupac was fucking her. Let her deny it. She's a motherfucking lie. But, so I try to give her a pass, but... She always wanted to insert herself, and I hate when people, t you can talk about people with Tupac. Y'all ever hear me talk about stuff that Tupac did in 91, 92, 93? I only talk about the little stuff he did the 11 months he was with us, right? So I hate when people that didn't even talk to him. Layla Steinberg keep on trying to act like, he, he told y'all, what did he say? I fired everybody that was from back in the from back in the day. He got rid of all of them. I'm not saying he was right or wrong, but he got rid of all of them. He didn't deal with no Layla Steinberg. If she said she could tell us one place she was at with Tupac or show one picture or anything where she was around in 90, since then he went to prison. But he, she got fired before that. So how would she know? How would she know what, what he was doing or what he was saying? But all his music and the things and the tattoos and all of that, tell y'all otherwise. Tupac was claiming the M.O.B. for whatever reason. For whatever reason. He was claiming that. His, his auntie said, you know, in the interview, she couldn't believe, you know, what she was saying and what she was on. But everybody want to put Tupac in to the person that he was. In 90, when they knew him in 91, 92, but they didn't know him in 95, 96. So they need to stop speaking on shit they don't know about. I'm about tired of her inserting herself and saying what he's going to do when he's around death row. They don't know. The only person that knows anything about what Tupac was doing in 95, 96 was Jasmine Fuller. Gobi and Tracy knew at a, a time things that he was doing production-wise and his plans on doing movies and, 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 and stuff like that for maybe about 
from February to June or July. And then y'all lost for whatever he would confide in them. But you got to remember, these dudes were young. He didn't confide with them and everything. There was a lot of trips and a lot of things where they wasn't there. They, they wasn't invited. They couldn't go for whatever reasons. A lot of places we went that, where the outlaws wasn't even there. It was just either Bo or Big Psych that was with him. So, I'm not saying I was there on all of the, all of the occasions and stuff like that, because I wasn't. But, I was trying to tell y'all, people keep saying and making accusations or, or, or assumptions and stating stuff of what they believe or what they would feel or what they would want. But y'all got to understand time periods. Okay, for you to say that, when did you see him in 95? When did you see him in 96? Did you go and visit him while he was in prison to talk to him then? Did you go anywhere around him? You know, just like she got that lie. Like she was at the museum. As much as that female liked to take pictures and be around black folks like a hippie, she would have some pictures there. When she trying to say she was at the Peterson Museum and, 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 and saw David Mack and all of them. That's a lying, a lying female. It's just lying. There's no truth to that. Why she likes saying stuff like that. I don't know, but when an exhibit opens up, who's the first one there walking around trying to be seen, trying to be interviewed? It's her. Who's always trying to be around the cameras and be seen? It's her. She worked for the state for a minute and did some things for the state after Tupac and Dell. And I think they got rid of her real soon after that as well. But. Man, all I just ask is people to evaluate the time periods. Be appreciative of your time period. And yeah. But thank you for being an older white woman that allows some young black kids come and live with you when they're trying to come up. And then eventually having sex with them. Thank you. We know what you are. We know what type of female that is, Layla. Stay in your lane, baby. Okay. Um, did you see the series of interviews that Bow Wow did over on Art of Dialogue's channel? And was there anything that he spoke on that, uh, you can confirm or you remember differently or, or anything with, with feedback as, as it comes to Bow Wow? Bow Wow, Bow Wow, when I came around, he was on his way out. I just remember because um, when we, me and Shug was meeting with this attorney, uh, Ed, Ed McPherson, I brought him up to the prison and had him meet with Bow Wow's stepdad. Because Bow Wow's stepdad was the guy that I remember that had a lot of control and used to try to train and teach and show Bow Wow how to rap and, and do stuff. He, I know he gives a lot of credit to Snoop and uh, and Corrupt and all of them. And isn't it obvious to y'all now? I know a lot of y'all got mad of the song and stuff that Bow Wow or the content that Bow Wow was rapping about while he was six to eight years old on death row. And y'all didn't like that and I agree with y'all. I got on Snoop about that uh with that new underdog show that you know everybody's liking, I I didn't like how he had kids cussing there, so I get why y'all mad uh, about how and, and and understand the difference between what J J D did uh, versus what um, uh, you know the Def Row was gonna do with Bow Wow, but isn't it obvious to y'all who's doing all that writing? Yeah, he told y'all right then that Corrupt. <laughs> Corrupt wrote the songs for him and all of that. And, and, 
and if you listen to the Bow Wow songs and the songs that was done while Corrupt was around, and the songs that was done while while uh, Corrupt wasn't around when he was back in Philly, and all of that, y'all, it's so obvious to me that Corrupt wrote all the Snoop raps there and there. <laughs> everybody Daz and everybody raps, even though Daz raps has gotten better. His his writing has gotten a little better, but y'all tell me that wasn't corrupt doing an RBX maybe doing all that writing back in the day. But anyway, uh, Bow Wow, like I told you, I'll reiterate how Bow Wow got out of the contract. Just for those of y'all who missed, and 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 Art did a good job of, of bringing things out on Bow Wow that we didn't know about Bow Wow. He he comes across as a you know as a good dude. Um, I don't know why y'all don't like him as a rapper too much. Uh, I kind of like some of the B-rated movies he was in uh, that he played in. I kind of like Bob Wall as an actor. But, um, Bob Wall, what happened with Bob Wall and how Jermaine Dupree was able to get Bob Wall from their fro was Johnny Cochran dropped the ball. We used a criminal attorney because Shug was doing that because we had a lot of criminal issues going on around Death Row. And, you know, Shug and David Kenner and them were just trying to make sure everybody was eating and was doing well. But uh, Johnny Crocker did the contract, did the paperwork for the contract for um, for him to get signed to uh, Death Row. But they didn't take the contract to get certified uh, before the judge. Is once again the reason why Bow Wow uh, never or was or J J JD was able to go um, and and pick up Bow Wow, which might have been a blessing in the disguise for Bow Wow to be honest, uh, because Defro it's obvious didn't know what to do with Bow Wow, and JD did, and uh, and, and gave him really a thirty year career. Uh, you know, someone wouldn't say it was all that well and and all of that, but I'm sure he's taking care of his family and doing okay. So, uh, and he's a household name. So, uh, I'm kind of glad that Johnny Cochran did drop the ball on that. Uh, I'm sure Shug Knight's not, but uh, he had always was going to deal with Jermaine Dupree about that. And but that's once again. And it's funny to me that a lot of y'all was like, don't understand. He said, well, Bow Wow was too young when he verified that situation about the slap and, and all of that. I mean, goddamn, y'all don't want to listen to a man that said he called. I don't hear all the, he said he called JD, clowning JD. And JD was like, man, that ain't happened in my city. That ain't happened to me. I can't wait till Suge Knight. I hope that's one of the things he clear up just to show y'all. How Gene Deal and people like that be adding. I'm not saying they lying. You know, I'm not one to say just because you lie about something here and there that you're just a liar and everything else that you say is a lie. But how people can add salt. Salt or put a little hot sauce on, on situations is what I get that, um, that that's going to be verified. And that's going to show y'all, because I don't believe, I never heard that Suge Knight would have slapped JD. He has never had that type of disgust for J Jermaine Dupree. Uh, you know, he was mad at one point and felt that, you know, he was going to make J JD pay for taking Bow Wow. Like I said, we even consulted an attorney. Ed McPherson was the attorney uh, that, that was going to meet with, uh, you know, and deal with the the paperwork and stuff. We I even had Bow Wow's stepdad come up to the prison to meet with Shug where they were talking about dealing with it. But once we found out that the contract wasn't certified, is when Shug was just like, all right, I'll deal with it later when I come home. Don't know why he never dealt with it in 2003, 2004, or anything like that. Uh, he was probably had so much stuff on his, on his table and was going to eventually deal with it. But... That's the situation with Bow Wow. Uh, the moral to this story is 
JD and what he was doing with boy groups and stuff like that. Thank God Chris Stokes didn't get a hold to him. <laughs> Thank God. But, you know, another person that was doing good things with boy groups is why I bring up Chris' name. But JD was perfect for Bow Wow. And I'm glad that happened. And glad he signed with JD. Yeah. All right, Reggie, I know you had talked about um, uh, previously when we had done segments about what Snoop's monthly was and what Tupac's monthly was. I was curious, um, did Suge have a monthly? And if so, do you know what that was? Oh, wow. Well. Yeah, um, okay, we're gonna just talk about 1995. So I can talk about Dre, Snoop, David Kenner. We talk about 1995, 1996. So, Tupac Monthly was going to be 75000 a month. I know y'all say, 75000 a month? He sold 10 million records. Okay. Well, when he was getting that advance uh, monthly, he hadn't sold that many records yet. But number two, like I keep telling y'all, the videos and all of that still hadn't drawn up the, the amount of money that y'all think a person should have been. Y'all got to remember, even after it all was said and done two years later, they only settled for $3 million. All right. So let's 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 cap that and with all of that. This everybody with that, but he was getting seventy five thousand a month. Uh, Dog Snoop Dogg was only getting fifty thousand a month, um, which I had to remember he had just had four point five million to five million dollars paid out for uh, a lawsuit, but that's what he was getting per month to live off of. Uh, Shug was getting one twenty five. A month, Dre was getting 125, and David Kenner was, for his all his law and expertise and all of that was getting 75, and then eventually 125 a month, and then right way was getting about 100 a month, and then other people like Das was getting I think Das was getting like 14,000 a month. Uh, a lot of the artists was only getting like fifteen hundred to a thousand. Danny Boy was getting thirty five hundred, as I remember. But y'all gotta remember on all of these things, on all these people monthly that I'm talking about, not mine and David Kenner's because we all had office staff and employees and stuff that we had to take care of. But the other people that I named, the artists and all of that, their monthly were um pretty much uh, being taken care of by what? That's all they had to spend their money on was stuff like that. Because all the automobiles, as y'all know, were in death row names that were getting paid. And so when you're paying for the automobile, you're paying for the insurance. Death row was paying for everybody's cell phones. They were paying for like penthouses. And, 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 and then as y'all saw, what I proved to y'all earlier uh, this year or last year, that Snoop was lying when he said, you know, nothing was in his name. Well, I showed y'all that the deed was in his name in the house in Claremont that he had. Uh, the house in, Luke, in, in Toluca Lake, I think that might have been a lease. And so Death Row was just leasing that. Definitely the, the penthouses on Wilshire that Snoop, uh, Pac, and Suge had, and, and, and Dre were definitely all uh, leases. They wasn't purchases. Now, I say, well, why didn't they have houses and name and stuff in their names and, and all of that? I keep trying to tell y'all. Number one, their credit wasn't that good to have it. Uh, but Dre had a house in Calabasas that was in his name. David Kenner House was in his own name. Shug House was in his name. Snoop House, as I told y'all, was in his name. Now, so y'all say, well, Tupac, that house we found out was... Well, yeah, I think it was in Sharita's name. It wasn't in Sharita's name. It was actually in David Kenner and his wife's name. But it was a lease. It was going to be a lease. It was a lease with an option to buy. And so they were trying to get the financing and everything worked out for Tupac. But y'all got to remember, Tupac is what? Out on bail. And he had all of these judgments. Y'all forget about all the judgments that Tupac had at that time. 
You're not putting, ain't no title company going to give you no, no insurance on a house, a title insurance. Y'all, I got to learn all this stuff. Title insurance, when you got all these judgments and stuff out there, because the first day you, you put it, the title, and nobody knew about trust and all of that back then. That wasn't a big thing then. But everybody was still talking about wills and stuff back, back in the 90s. We didn't learn about trust until later. But anyway, as soon as you go and file a name and the name Tupac Shakur, what's going to pop up on, on there? Somebody be coming down there following a, a lien on the house. He had tax issues. He had, he had issues. So that was the reason why a lot of the stuff wasn't in Pac's name in that house. It was, everything was getting worked out. He was getting all the judgments just about paid off and stuff. And there was still some judgments eventually. Y'all can look it up and from the estate where he was going to get paid. But that was the reason why the names wasn't in their names and stuff. But they were going to get worked out and the house was, like I said, a lease to buy and was going to eventually get put in the Tupac's name. Uh, but it wasn't yet. It wasn't ever yet. And then that's when, when unfortunately, what happened to him happened. And the mother elected that she didn't want to proceed with getting the house. So I know what y'all first thing would be. Well, why y'all, he still sold so many records and why y'all just didn't buy the house? It was only a $2 million house or whatever. Well, $2 million and stuff like that was a lot when you had other obligations coming out. You know, you're not making that much money yet. You, you're making money like, you know, if he made 10 million, you know, y'all keep saying he made, he sold 10 million records. Well, that's over the time. That's over the lifetime of the album. But at that point when Tupac died, he had only, was a tribute to 5 million records. Let's, let's say 5 million records. 2.5, uh, really, but, you know, it was a double, so we say 5 million. Okay, let's say 6. I know some of y'all say, it says 6. Okay, so I'll say 6. So most artists were only getting a dollar a record, all right? So that's $6 million. We know already that he did, what, nine music videos during that time period, I believe? Say each one of those videos was $300,000. You got to pay for that. You should pay for half of them, but you got to pay for that. You got to pay for all of those leasings on your cars, you got to pay for all of that advances. I'm keep trying to tell y'all, money is not like y'all think it was. Okay, so artists was just as big as Tupac at that time. Let's put in comparisons. Coolio. He beat him out that year for for um, album or, or, or song of the year. Beat California Love out. How was he living when he died? Okay, let's talk about um, Lauren Hill. The Fugees, ooh, hey, y'all can say what y'all want. Fugees was just as big as Pop. That album that the Fugees did was just as big as Tupac album in, in 96, as All Eyes on Me. LL Cool J, Mr. Smith was just as big. Just as big. Now, these were only singles. So, of course, you know, it don't seem like they don't get as, as much credit for the amount of sales. Biggie Smalls album. Well, we know that only sold a million and a half, two million at the time. But look how Lee said he was living and stuff. What did he own when he died? I know y'all say, well, Tupac had five or six albums. Out. Well, I can't talk about those, that time period. I don't know. But y'all never talk about Interscope and Jimmy and all of them, or or Antron and and, and, and Layla and all of them, or, or or those people. Never ask him what happened to the money from Juice, or or um, Poetic Justice or anything. I never hear y'all ask about any of those questions. Always poor Suge Knight did this to Tupac. Suge Knight did this. Tupac was. Suge was beating him out of this or doing this to him. Y'all really, really, really need to learn the business and stop being keyboard gangsters and research on people that was around that time. Now, new artists today are making a lot more money and doing a lot more things. 
Just like in the NBA. Shit, when 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 Magic Johnson got that $25 million, $25 million for 25 year contract, everybody was like, whoa, whoa. The motherfucking average motherfucker in the NBA now gets $25 million. A dude that's on the bench gets $25 million for one year. Not 25 years. So all I'm just trying to say is the time periods are different. Stop comparing Death Row, Suge Knight, and what they were doing in 95, 96 to the guys that y'all hear or believing or claiming to making all of this money in 2024, 2023. You know, the Kanye's and all them. They got the benefit off the, the hard work of what Tupac and Ice Cube and all of them did in the, the mid-90s. Just like LeBron and Kevin Garnett and, and people like that got the benefit off the work that Magic and Isaiah and Larry Bird and all of them did in the 80s and the 90s. Michael Jordan's a billionaire behind sneakers. Not from playing basketball. <laughs> So, hey, that's all I got to say. But I, you know, I just wanted to address that because a lot of people always ask them and worrying about the money part and all of that. And, you know, Shook shouldn't get a bad rap on everything. He should get a bad rap on some things, but not everything. And not especially when it comes to dealing with the money situation. Yeah. Reggie, um, I had D-Dog on the line. Uh, he, I reached out to him um, because he wanted to speak with you about on our last series of interviews where you kind of had spoken about how the West Side Pyros or whatever had set up Suge. So um, D-Dog, I have you on. Uh, Reggie, you're on as well. D-Dog, ask him whatever you want to ask him. Talk to him about whatever you want to talk to him about. What, what up, D-Dog? Man, I ain't heard from you, but in a while, ever since Suge, Suge been giving you shout outs on that last... Uh... On his last podcast, nigga, you, you, you ghosted your boy. What's up? <laughs> oh, no, man. I've been around, man, just paying attention to all this, you know, that I'm hearing, you know? Yep, yep, yep. Uh, I heard your last podcast, and I wanted, to, I wanted to kind of clarify something that y'all said that was wrong. Okay. Y'all said that Suge was the one that was going to be the one that did the most of the hustling. Well, I, and, and, and I know the players, and I agree with you on that. When I say West Side, those niggas are all West Side niggas, though. But yeah, but they were West Side Power Rules from Compton. Yeah, it was only one out there from West Side Power Rules, and uh, the yeah. other niggas, you know, Jim Brown from Campanella, West, uh, Marla West Side of Compton, West Side of Compton. Yeah. <laughs> Marla, Marla Tola, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. The same nigga that's saying, he's the same cat that's saying Power Rules ain't bloods. Oh. I got a question for him. If we ain't, if we ain't, if Paul was ain't blessed, what were we? You know what I mean? What were we? We showed what Crips, so how can you make that comment? You feel me? Yeah. Yeah. You know, I talked to other OGs, and I talked to some OGs on, uh, you know, on Paul Street. You feel me? Like Big Mighty. You know what I'm saying? I talked to him. You know, he, he, he told me about Bone. You know what I'm saying? When he worked with Train Day, Pete Strong Bone, when he worked with Train Day, when he was doing that movie, how he knew, you know, the fans were acting like they were cameramen. That's how they was able to infiltrate the jungles and get that indictment over there. Yeah, I remember right after that movie, Train Day, a, bu a bunch of dudes from the jungles got indicted, huh? Yeah, yeah a bunch of oh, over, over 70 dudes. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah. From, from BPS, you know what I'm saying? So, Pete Strong Bone... You know, he has a reputation of taking niggas down on a movie set. That's the same way he did with Suge. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, and, I wanted, and I wanted to clarify, you know, niggas always saying, oh, Suge should have got out the car, you know, this, that, and the other. But let me tell you something. Suge smelt the setup when he pulled up. When he saw the niggas that was out there, like Jim Bob, Marla Tola, or Marla Kinsey, you know what I'm saying? And, and Bone, you know what I'm saying? And I want to, and I, another thing I want to put on the record. I want to put on the record that it was Marva Taylor that gave Pete Strong Bone the gun at Tazburger. 
And then the same nigga turned around and testified for sure that he picked the bone up from, from that he picked the gun up from bone. The same nigga that picked the bone the gun up is <coughs> the same nigga that gave bone the gun. So let's not let's let's clarify and let's get the narrative straight. Wait a minute, so you saying so you saying Marvin is the one that gave the gun to uh Bone? Yeah. Whoa, I never heard of that. And he was the same nigga turned around and testified in the civil trial that he picked the gun up. You know, when I and I got a nigga challenged me, I show receipts. You feel me? Yeah. So like I say, should have been there nine years over a setup, you know what I'm saying, I was involved with Dr. Dre. You know, I got his checks out there where he paid niggas to do certain shit. You know what I mean? Everybody know I'm the nigga that recorded Bone. Because Bone is a Bone worked with the LAPD and the sheriff department. He, he testified in court. He got immunity against you. Hey, he you know what? That's the shit. question I always want to ask. Why Why did you... You know, I interject myself a lot in the... Shook things and I say things here and there to piss Shook off sometimes, and then sometimes I be in support of a Shook or whatever. What was your reasoning for interjecting yourself and, and, and taping Bone? Because it appeared that the way you and Bone was talking on that conversation, and for those of y'all that haven't heard the conversation, don't know what we're talking about, go to Steel Bombing Podcast, and a lot of that audio is, is posted up on, on Steel Bombing Podcast. Uh, on Spotify, but why did you uh, interject yourself into that? What was your main reason for doing that? I know you got a lot of love for Shug, but it seemed to be more than love for Shug that you did that. To, you know, well, for, for starters, for starters, I, I met Bone while I was filming for out of Compton. I didn't know that nigga, but I heard foul shit about him mm. through the street. You know what I'm saying? Okay. And so, and so, like I say, when when I got whipped for him running to play on my homie. And after I went to the, went to the, you know, I, I, I fought an attempt murder while I was filming Shroud of the Coffee. So when I, when I was in the... Matter of fact, we're going to show the picture right now of you while you, so people know who you were in Straight Outta Compton. Okay, but go yeah. ahead. Okay, yeah. So when I, got the, when I got out of prison since I was 17, I figured out that it was a whole setup. That, and, and, you know, he used me as a pawn. You feel me? Yeah. And so, and so I, made the, I, made the, I made the recording... To show sure my loyalty to him, as well as I'm not with this nigga. The shit that he did, he did on his own. Okay. You know what I mean? And so I was putting in a predicament to where either I show my side or I'll be beefing with Shug. You feel me? Okay. And I chose to beef with Bone. You feel me? And that's what it is. I, I've been knowing Shug in 2003. You know, all Yeah, because y'all met in Chino. I, I remember y'all met in Chino or somewhere. Yeah. Oh, it was County. Okay, I thought you meant Chino. Yeah, okay. that's where we met, L.A. County. Yeah, and so I've been knowing Sugar 2003. I just met Bone 2013. So I, I don't have no loyalty to Bone. He's mm -hmm. not my homie. You feel me? Okay. He's just another blood mm -hmm. homie that I knew that I saw that was in Hollywood. Okay. You know what I'm saying? And so, like I say, I, I'm, I'm just putting the narrative out there because I've been hearing niggas saying all this shit about Sugar, this and that, but Shug, but one thing for sure, if any one of the niggas that's talking shit was in Shug's face, he'd slap the taste out their mouth. You know, and they know it. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, a nigga can say whatever, but like I say, I'll pull up to no jumper. I'll pull up to whatever on a nigga, man. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Whoever got my name in my mouth want to holler at me, I'll pull up, man. All you got to do is say you want it. Well, you tell them who you are again. Nigga, so niggas that don't What's know that? who you are, tell them who you are? Or do you want to say that? I'm, yeah, I'm yeah. feed off of NHP, Inglewood. Okay. Okay. All right. You know what I'm saying? Shug is my homie. And all these rest of these niggas talking, you know what I'm saying? They got something to say about the homie. Mm. If he was in your face, he'll slap the shit out of you and you know it. So, you niggas can say what you want about, about a man that's in jail. That's coward shit. You know what I'm saying? When he was here, you niggas was crickets. You feel me? Yeah. Well, you know I know you be talking to him, and that's why I don't mind giving you the platform to talk to him because I talk shit about him here and there as well. Yeah. And so, yeah, but, but you know what? But you know what, Raj? Your beef for your beef for sure. I don't look at that as a real beef. Yeah, I mean, it, like it is. Yeah, you know I mean? yeah, yeah. He, he left. He left his company in your hands for a reason. Yeah. 
So I say that to say now other nigga had that title with you. But all these other fuck niggas out here running their mouth, just, you know, like I say, what go around, come around. You feel me? Yeah, yeah. And, 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 and like I say, he's been in jail for nine years, you know what I'm saying, behind a straight setup. Yeah. And nobody wants, no, all these niggas on all these platforms, nobody wants to talk about Cleebone Sloan with, with the prosecutor and, and got immunity. Yeah. Okay, this is the this is the training day nigga here. You feel me? He's supposed to be the biggest blood nigga in LA, but he works with the police on the low. You feel me? But I'm here. I'm the red exposure. You feel me? Yeah. Because why all these all these other niggas are scared of bone? Well, I ain't gonna let you say. I ain't gonna let you say on my platform that he the biggest blood nigga in LA because he ain't. <laughs> I ain't letting that go. But yeah. Well, they try to they try to portray that. You feel me? Yeah. Yep. You feel me? And, and all these niggas with these platforms that's scared to talk about bone, y'all niggas ain't real. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And, and keep shit name out your mouth if you ain't gonna help you. Exactly. That's what I'm on. Okay. And, 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 Raj, and, and I gotta say this, Reg, since I met you, you've been helping Shug. Whether he knows it or not, he, you've been allowing me to push my content, you know what I'm saying, to show and change the narrative. You feel me? Respect. And so, yeah. And that's what I got to say about that, bro. Well, I appreciate you reaching out to John, and I apologize. I'm going to make sure um, I get your new number because I sure didn't know that was you that was trying to get me. And John was like, man, your boy D Dog been trying to get hold of you. And so. Oh, yeah, it's all good. It's all, yeah. all good. I just, just want to show some real love to the real problem while I'm still. Keep your head up in there, and hopefully you'll be home soon to be with your kids. That's the main thing. Yep. Yes. Appreciate you, D Dog. All right, stay up. All right, bro.